I am Vinny Tunnerich. Folks, you're going to get this half and stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. You may be soft and succulent at the beginning of this process, but hang in there. Before long, you will be lean and mean, just like the beautiful Miss Anna Bocino. Take your baby by the heel. Come on, Anna. Do, do you that a, know is that song? an Achilles reference? Yeah, well, I think, you know, uh, he's talking about dance hall days. You know how they would bring their leg up and you would grab the heel and then slide the woman across the floor. She'd be like in a half split going across the room type of thing. I mean, we didn't do that, but I'm talking about people that knew mm -hmm. how to dance. Am I making sense? Yeah. So like if you sense. watch these, these like flamenco dancers and those kinds yeah. of people. Uh, so do, do you actually know that song, Anna? Yeah. Yeah. It's not Wang name? Chung. Who is it? That is Wang Chung. Good, that is Wang good Chung. Job. Okay. That's Wang Chung. Yeah. And as you know, he had one other hit. Do you remember the other hit? Everybody Wang Chung tonight. <laughs> yeah. He just named that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Everyone he tried did. to turn his name into a verb. He he did. He he didn't try to. I think the man succeeded. He did. He achieved I, it. That's I think uh, everyone needs to Vinny tonight. <laughs> Well, oh, they're calling for a new T-shirt right now. Um, yeah. um, let me write this in, and we're going to just play this at the. Uh, we're going to play this at the end of the show because everyone needs to hear this. Everyone needs to Wang Chung tonight, right? Is this it? Yeah, I think I think we have it here. Okay, all right. Enough of that, Anna. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Anna, mm -hmm. ready, ready to do a show? Me and you? I guess. We, um, th th that's, first off, let me start with this. I just finished recording with none other than one of my favorite people to record with. Ooh. Outside of Anna. Sure. Who is it? Is it uh, me Nina Teicholz? No, meaning a Friday guest. Nina. Anna, Nina. Nina's, uh, Nina's almost kind of like a... Uh, a Georgia. How did you know that? Because she has a new book out. Okay. Yeah. I heard it's great. I haven't read it yet. I'm looking forward to reading her. Okay. Book. Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you if, if George, you know, I was just talking to you off the air. If something happened to Serena, I would have to find another Brit. Right. Okay. It might be Georgia. If something happened to Serena and Georgia wasn't gay and her uh -huh. wife left her and she was straight for some reason, I, that that's who I'd want to be with. <laughs> Okay. Girl, I feel like there's a lot of hoops to jump through to make this happen. Yeah, there's a lot. She, where there's the, a will, there's a way. Her girlfriend would have to get hit, not girlfriend, her wife would have to get hit by a bus. She would have to then be so distraught that she became straight. And somehow Serena is no longer in the picture. None of this could ever happen. Right. But yeah, right. Georgia, I, I love this woman to death. I can talk yeah. to her all day long. Folks. It's a must read. Look, I'm not getting paid to do this. The show is coming out this Friday. You need to hear this show. Georgia Eads, I mean, she started off at Harvard. She's she's an MD. She's a medical doctor, but she's also a research scientist and she's a psychiatrist, not a psychologist. Uh, the difference is a psychologist is someone with a PhD who can sit there and listen to your problems and basically never do anything to help you. Or you can go to a psychiatrist, which is an MD, a medical doctor that can help you with medication if you are, I don't know, like suicidal. I'm using the worst condition. Or, or you know. They can prescribe psych meds. Right. You, you have, um, how you say, any of the, the real problems, right? And uh, she's one of those. And she's been on the show before. She was in my oh, first. Oh, the irony. <laughs> <laughs> that she can prescribe the meds, but she most yeah. likely won't. Well, She'll tell you to eat eat a better diet. And you're like, damn that's it. The thing. We're, we're talking about a Harvard trained, you know, this woman goes, I mean, this woman's got pedigree up down the middle. Yeah. She was in my first movie, Fatter Documentary. Yeah. And uh, I pretty much said, if I can't get Georgia Eid, I'm not doing it. I said that about Jim Abrams and Nina Teichos and Gary Topps too. Yeah, but for sure. They all showed up also. Um, Georgia, you, you got to go get this book. I get not a dime from this. Go get it. It's called Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind. 
And everything we talked about today, everything that's in this book, if you have, you know, anything or anyone in your life, and look, I get it. A lot of people are dealing with ADHD and ADD and the kids and this and that and the whole thing. And, and yeah. people have, uh, you know, borderline personality disorders and the whole thing. They literally brought people into a lab, put them on a ketogenic diet. And in 43% of the cases, these people went off of medication. Wow. Now, that seems were, like a pretty good success rate. In medical terms, 43% just by changing your diet. She said yeah. some of the people left the hospital on no drugs. On no drug. I mean. How long were they in for? I, I, I don't want to misspeak. I can't remember. Mm, but I was okay. just, it, it was one of those profound conversations when you go, wow, you mean something as simple and as hard as changing your diet can change your whole life. And listen, I have family members with depression, you name it. You know, we, we all, and like, I'm, I'm not special. We all have somebody with depression. I got friends that have kids with, um, you know, they, 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 they can't go, they can't get jobs, right? They, they can't leave the house. They can't, you know, all sorts of problems. These are real problems, right? Um, yeah. What this woman is talking about, you can eat your way out of something. No, it doesn't mean that's going to work for everyone. And look, right. today, I, I even mentioned this during the show. I saw a text this morning from Robin Dobbins. Did you see that uh -huh. text? Did you see the no. text? No, I don't, I, I don't think I was on that text. Well, it was on my text. Let me see if I can find it. I was telling, I didn't mention Robin's whole name in the thing. But I'm going to see if I can find this text because... Um, uh, oh, it, here it is. I, I think I might have found it. Okay. Um, this is from Robin Dobbins. Okay. This is my four-year NSNG anniversary. Okay, we got to work on that, Robin. I know you're happy and you're feeling good, but NSNG anniversary. <laughs> We're going to have to punch we, that we, up. I mean, I could get Kurt to punch that up. Okay. <laughs> And she goes, I'm in, I'm currently in year six, which means I think she was doing stuff before that. She was trying to heal herself, right? Um, and then she shows pictures of before, you know, she's, you know, heavy set, double chin. And you see her now, big smile on her face. She's smiling in both photos, but she's very lean in the same. And yeah. we've met Robin. She's very, you know, oh, she's yeah. very. She's a little lean. tiny thing. Yeah, like if she ever told you that she was overweight or morbidly obese, you would just go, no, it's not. No, no, problem. I would be like, you're just a little bit. What are you talking about? Uh, and she goes on to say, that was just the side effect. She's talking about the pictures of me fueling my body body properly. It's nice to have a visual uh, a visual for for effort, you know, and blah, 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 blah. But she's talking about her mental health here. Right. And she goes into a whole thing about her mental health. And um, she basically turned it around. This woman was at wit's end. Yeah. Right. And we use Robin a lot here, just like we use people like um, uh, Scott King and, and Tim Maui and, and, you know, um, you know, uh, Jen Mendica, you know, just to name a few. You know, I use the few that hang around because I like to use those names. But this, you know, this is what we were talking about today. And it's amazing what we can do with a diet when it comes to any sort of mental disorder. Now, Am I claiming or is she claiming that you're going to fix everything? And if you're suicidal or you're thinking about, you know, going postal or something like, no, no, you need help. For sure. But look, I mean, if you know someone who's suffering, I have, I know someone who's suffering that refuses to go see a, a psychiatrist because he says the psychiatrist is just going to put me on drugs. Okay. Here's something you might want to try. Maybe I'll get the book to him. Yeah. I told you, I, I ordered four books this morning. Yeah. Right after I did the podcast, because I know. I have like, it sitting in my Kindle queue. I can't wait to read it. Just, just get it. Get it. Yeah. No, I have it. It's in, the, it's in the library, but I haven't read it yet. I ordered four copies because I have two friends to send it to immediately. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I mentioned it to Serena because Serena is friends with one of her friends. And then she told me she went, so I'm going to have three extra copies. I'm going to hand them out. 
you know, and I'm going to find out if there's an audible version. If there is, I'm going to be listening to that because what this woman was talking about was nothing short of miraculous, folks. So please, if you it really is incredible, people, go listen to this coming Friday show with Dr. Great. Georgia Eid. Well, um, I got to say, I got to remind the audience why I named my books and my brand Eat Happy and Eat Happy Kitchen is because for me, I changed my brain chemistry when I went NSNG. It improved my brain chemistry so much that I felt just more solid, less anxious, way less depressed. In fact, not depressed. And um, it meant it was a big deal to me. So it sounds like a silly title because I mean, who the pursuit of happiness is sometimes <laughs> elusive to say the least. Yeah. But but if you are at least starting with the foundation of having good brain chemistry and your diet is able to contribute to that. And, uh, you know, my mom was a sugar addict. My mom was diagnosed with all kinds of mental illness. Towards the end, she was on a pretty good cocktail of drugs for her, but she struggled her entire life trying to find the right cocktail of drugs. And she was not going to give up sugar. She was not going to change the way she ate. So for me, it's like, it's like one of those things. Like I really want innovation in medicine and I really want innovation um, in, in food. But also for me personally, I prefer to eat whole foods and don't eat the sugar and don't go on the medications. And that's the way that I'm able to do it. That's my experience. But, um, you know, watching my mom basically not be able to survive getting an infection in the hospital and what would, should have been a routine surgery, a heart valve replacement. When there's the, she's 71 and there's the 86 year old guy across the hall who had his and got up and was walking the next day. Yeah. I mean, the, that afternoon, because they want you moving around, you know? Yeah. And so she did not get up. She got an infection and her, she, her organ system was not strong enough to fight it. And so that made a huge impact on me. And I was like, well, I can't save this situation. And I had to do my own therapy and my own, my own work about that. My own grieving. It was nine years ago, but, um, I, uh, wanted to make sure that I made an impact for others who were looking for relief from that. And look, I, I, thank you, Anna. And thank you for saying that because, uh, most people look, we have to be the voice for people who can't or don't have, or are capable of having their own voice to bring this up. And, you know, my good friend, I'm gonna name drop Howie Mandel is the voice of that in the United States. You know, he, he's always saying, you know, if you break a leg, you go and you get a cast, you know, if you injure yourself, you go, you put a bandaid on, but somehow mental health is supposed to always be in the background. It's not talked about It's hush hush. I mean, there were, there was a time in this country and around the world where if you, they would just put you in, in an insane asylum, right? Your family would just push you away and not, you know, not even deal with it and just not talk about it at dinner parties. Yeah. But, we don't we don't have that option anymore. And there's too many people with these problems. And it turns out the diet is the problem. And you know, we've had Dr. Mary Newport on this show, uh, talking about something right in the same neighborhood of that, you know, people with Alzheimer's and all these other kind of, you know, uh, diseases that are coming on Parkinson's and what have you. And they're finding out that just by giving people coconut oil, not even trying to, you know, it's better if you get into a ketogenic diet and be in a ketogenic state, but people who are still eating high carb diets, just taking the coconut oil seems to help those people. You know, as you know, I'm a big fan of oil. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm going to start calling myself uh, the little diesel that could because I live on olive oil, fish oil, coconut oil. That's about it. Yeah, those are your oils. Yeah, I, you know, oh, and CBD, you know, to help. And, and by the way, that's right. You like your CBD. Think about this. And, and I don't, I don't sit there and proselytize about CBD and think it's some kind of miracle thing. I think all of the things I do, taking, you know, my omegas, you, you're supposed to take two a day. I take eight a day, Anna. I take, oh, I take four, four of yours a day. I take two in the morning and two at dinner. So four in the I morning, take three four of your night. vitamin D's and three of your magnesiums a day. Yeah. I take oh, a and ton four of liposomal vitamin C's a day. Wow, you take more of those. No, I take, yeah, I take, yeah, I take two in the morning, two at night. So four of those. Yeah. But, you know what? I started with the hysterectomy recovery with that. And now I'm like, I'm sticking with it because I've just noticed that like my healing of my skin wasn't happening as faster with hitting mm -hmm. perimenopause. And then I noticed that it, the healing was happening faster when, when I was uh, skin stuff was 
looking better after I was starting to take vitamin C. Sorry, you were on you were on a tear. I, I'm still on a tear. Um, look, there's one thing I talk about it all the time. If someone's new to this podcast, I had leukemia back in 07. I was told when they got it into remission that it was in a chronic stage and it would grow back within you know three to five years. They told me if I got to five years before I was on chemo again, that would be really good. You take seven from 24, what do you get, Anna? You get 16, probably, 17? Almost a 13, I'm good at math. What is it, seven, 14? No, you're right, no, you're at 16. 16. Yeah. Okay, 16 years. My cancer, yeah. my leukemia that they told me, medical, meds, medical, hey, it's coming back. It's coming back. And I'm sure it's going to come back at some point. Because, you know, no, it's I, in my hold on. I know, but you don't necessarily have to tell that story. But but I, I don't I'm believe just saying. I'm doing everything I can. I'm keeping my cortisol. I keep everything at bay. I don't let myself get excited. You know, I, I talk about it all, all the time <laughs> on the show. This podcast to the contrary. But you understand what I'm saying. In, I know. We life, hear, I know. I, but I, we hear you lose your shit. I'm you save calm. it for the podcast. No, I, I, everything comes out here. I live a calm life. I, I, yeah. I, med I don't meditate, but I stretch, which is my form of meditation. Um, I like target sports. Uh, a lot of mornings I go out in the morning and I shoot skeet because your mind has to go away from everything else just to concentrate mm -hmm. on something that's moving 60 miles an hour. When I don't have a chance to do that, I have an archery situation in my backyard, mostly spring, summer, and fall. In the winter, it's hard to shoot archery with a jacket on. Um, I don't know how women do it with the boobs. Um, but at any rate, I do all these things to take my mind off of things. I do my stretching. I go to the gym. I exercise. I do everything I can. And yeah. I'm, I'm taking a ton of omega-3 fatty acids. And I'm taking a ton of olive oil. And I started CBD. And guess what? Just like with my cancer, when I went to the next specialist, and I went to two or three, I went to a, a neurologist, and I went to a bone guy and the whole thing. And I was like, Vin, you got degenerative discs in your neck. That's why I, mm. you're all over. You couldn't. I look like Mr. Um, Burns from The Simpsons. I was like, uh, all, <laughs> I couldn't move. I couldn't move. Yeah. And all of these doctors told me the same thing. The only way out, the only way you're going to feel better is by having surgery. We have to go in and, and take that out and put a fake disc in and put fake meniscus in there and the whole thing, and then you'll yeah. be fine. Intense. Okay, number one, I, I don't want that, right? Number two, they said, well, if you're not going to do that, we can send you to a pain management doctor, and they did. Some guy, I go visit him at a top hospital, and I walked in, and I said to him, Doc, you can – manipulate my neck, do whatever you want, but I'm not taking medication. I'm not going to take a drug. And he goes, well, with that kind of situation, I mean, the best thing for you are drugs. I went, okay, that's not an option. What else you got? He tried to do some bullshit, woo-woo crap. It didn't work. And that's when I came home and started. It's like, well, all these jackwads talk about CBD. And I didn't just go <laughs> buy CBD gummy bear somewhere. I came home and did the best Google study yeah. because that's the only way to study CBD. I don't know if you know that is Google. And if you start doing it enough, because where else are you going to learn? Because there's no science behind this stuff, right? I was trying to figure out, is there a dosage, right? Is there a dosage that you can take? And the more I read, the more I learned. First, you got to have full spectrum. You can't have this other bullshit. Next, you got to have this. You got to have that. Then it's how much do you dose and how often do you dose, right? Had to learn that, right? And then I tried it and it didn't work at first because I tried it for three or four days. But what I learned, just like taking omegas, you know, omega-3 fatty acids, just like taking olive oil, you have to let your system get it. You, you got to keep taking it. It doesn't work yeah. like a drug. It doesn't just make you feel better overnight. It didn't. Yeah. And, People were like, aren't you sleeping better from it? No, it didn't do anything like that for me. It wasn't until I got to, I think I told Anna, what did I tell you? 10, 15 days? We had an yeah, I think off. So. You said like a, yeah. I said, you're going to be done with the first bottle of this stuff before you actually start feeling better, 
right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But here I am moving my neck again. I do neck exercises every other day. I don't miss. I, I got my neck back. I'm in virtually no pain. The only time I feel any pain is if I have like a 35 to 55 pound back pack on and is straining my, my, you know, traps and my delts. And what are you going to do for mountain climbing? Yeah, you know, I just try to go light and go, go quick. You know, it's, I, I can't do any multi-day treks with the tents and all that with the 40 pound yeah. pack. Right? Aren't but you going I, to Whitney soon? Yeah, but you know, that's, that's a 12, 15 pound pack. Most of it is water. Okay. We carry things where we scoop up water and drink it anyway. Um, folks, don't just scoop water from a stream. We we go through a, a cleaning. Use the use the filter or whatever the cleaning. Yeah, they, they got they got things out there. You need to go go to REI. They'll tell you what to do. All right. Yeah. So I didn't mean to get on a diatribe about this, but there are ways to get yourself healthy even after the medical com- community tells you you can't. And I know that makes me Mister Tinfoil Hat guy. But I'm here to tell you, Anna, it's, look at me. All I can say is, look at me. Yeah. Right? I've, I, I'm beating cancer now for 16 years, and my neck is relatively comfortable. Well, and you're, you're a guy, not, not just the cancer, but the fact that you had all those old football injuries, stressors, whatever you want to call them, yeah. you, would be the, you would be the candidate for the guy who would have all the surgeries and live in pain for the rest of your life or be addicted to the opioids or, you know what I mean? And you... you go a different route. And look, I mean, you prioritize it, Vinny, though. That's the thing. But speaking of football, I played linebacker for, you know, a ton of my childhood, all the way up until my 21st birthday. And I played back in the day when it was helmet to helmet contact, and I was a linebacker. So, you know, I worry about CTE, right? Every time I can't remember something, oh, my God, is this the beginning of CTE? I'm telling you, all of this stuff, the olive oil, the, you know, the, 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 the fish oil, it all helps. I know it sounds like I'm doing a big infomercial for products that I sell, but I'm not. Um, they by the don't way, have go buy to buy your Capelli. products, but why wouldn't they? Because they're really good. Yeah. Villa Capelli, folks, you want to feel healthy like me and look fabulous the way I do, go get Villa Capelli olive oil. Um, Stephen Crutchfield is or was hanging out with Anna when what yesterday right. Anna? Tuesday yeah. night. I saw him. He was supposed to be at my house at 1 PM and mm-hmm. being on Puglia time, I saw him at 8 30 PM. <laughs> mm-hmm. That sounds so about I, right. we, Yeah. I ha- I met him in Vito, his new boyfriend, who's super cute. And mm-hmm. at the sideways in bar, this is right off the freeway because they had to make it to Santa Barbara by a certain time to be able to check into their, um, hotel and i was like you guys can just stay with us and then they're like no we're going to the hotel i was like okay so Wasn't yeah i it's featured in the movie sideways yeah it's a, it, that's the hotel he stays in in that movie so they remodeled it, it's been remodeled since then because that was 20 years ago but um yeah so we met there had a quick little drinky poo and then they hit the road and then uh he brought me they have a new decanter i don't know if it's on the website yet but it's super pretty and i'm going to use it and so the next live stream i do with cooking i'll show you guys it's really beautiful um but yeah i got to spend time with stephen crutchfield and it was delightful it was 45 minutes of sheer delight listen folks you won't get a chance to spend time with stephen crutchfield or no. even get to meet the beautiful mr Vito. but but you could get a piece of those guys by getting villa capelli olive oil and if you want to save some money, you want to screw Steven over a little bit. So why, why should he have all the luck with this great? <laughs> new guy? Right, exactly. Screw, screw him over a little bit. Put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. Get a whopping 10% off. If your order is over $125, which if you get a three liter 10, get a couple of other things, it gets to 140 minus your discount. You're still above 125 and um, you can get free shipping which is a big deal when you're getting three liters. Folks, um, I know most of this is in America. Three liters is damn near a gallon. Yeah. You get a gallon of the good stuff and it's in a tin. So it's going to stay away from light. It's it's not going to get rancid. Keep it in a cool cabinet. You'll be fine. Don't put it next to the furnace. That'll ruin it. No. No. Villa Capelli olive oil. Let them know we sent it, sent you Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't mean to take over the first part of the show, but that whole Fine. Georgia East thing is just on my mind. And it's great. I, mean, I love it. I, it's know, really it's hard to, 
and you know <laughs> by the way if you're listening for you make the changes and be the example i know we talked about this last week or two weeks ago i know though a lot of you are going to be listening and hearing that and going oh someone i really love is having issues and i really would love for them to make these changes and that's when it gets really hard that's when it gets really hard because you can't necessarily force a new lifestyle or way of eating or change on somebody. But for yourself, you totally can do it. You totally have got this. And um, I got a thing the other day, Vinny, I got a response from somebody that um, the old, you get this, I'm sure as a trainer, I don't have time. I don't have time to make dinner. It's too much. I don't have time. And I'm just like, I get it. But if you're going to prioritize your health, you need to find time and rearrange some things. And I'm not necessarily saying make dinner, but you're going to have to find time to cook things to make your dinner making process easier. You're going to have to prep some food. You're going to have to find the time to get in the kitchen and prep some food. So I thought about it. And I was like, well, when you can't find the time to do it, to me, what that says, because money and time are resources and they're limited. We don't, we're not all made of money. We don't all have endless time. We have the same 24 hours in the day, right? right? So you have to figure out, you have to prioritize. And sometimes it's going to be a hard conversation with yourself and a little come to Jesus, you know, of reprioritizing, like what's more important in this moment. But the thing that I like about doing that, when you realize that, then you can take responsibility for every single choice you make. Because if you're going to sit and play the video game, you're choosing to do that. That, and you're going, I'm choosing that. I was, I was going to bring up that point. You know, people say they don't have the time, but the average American spends seven plus hours a day FaceTime on a, looking at on a screen, a phone, a phone so or a TV. I don't yeah. Want this person to tell me that he or she doesn't have the time. And here's right. the other thing my parents, and I think most parents back in my day, they came home from work. They didn't sit around. People go, well, you know, I play, I've just played video games for an hour. I get home. I use that to unwind. Right. Where was all the unwinding when I was a kid? <laughs> My parents would get home. Where's your homework? Let's get that rolling. My mom's in the kitchen making noise with the pots and pans. My dad's outside doing work and the whole thing. They didn't come home and just go, oh, I, I need to unwind. Where's my wine? Go get me a drink. Where's my smoking slippers? Remember people had smoking jackets and <laughs> Not my parents, you know, they just went one for, from one to the other and people go, well, what, I'm not supposed to rest. Well, fuck, I didn't tell you to have kids. You know, you want kids, you know, you take care of your kids, you do this, you do that, you do everything. We do what we want to do. You right. get one life. And if you decide you're going to have kids and, you're, and, and if you don't have kids and you still don't have time, you got the wrong job, right? Because I don't know any job that takes 18 hours a day. I don't. Truck drivers drive, what, 10, 12 hours a day. Yeah. I don't know any other job that does that on any consistent basis. Sorry. So how are you spending your time? Cooking, cleaning, doing all of that should all be part of it. And look, you could go, oh, Vinny, well, you got someone over there cooking and cleaning. No, I don't. The reason I was running five minutes late for Anna was because I was still at the grocery store picking out fish for tonight because my wife is somewhere else working. She's out in Hollywood. You know, you do what you got to do. Well, you think I'm going to go, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going hungry. I got to go eat out every night. Why then? I, I don't have time. You make time. You make, and look, I hate to I, be the whole I, ass here. I no, I, 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 I'm okay with it because I think that like the people who are successful doing it had to have some uncomfortable conversations with themselves. And to me, what I don't have time reads as it's not a priority and I don't want to learn a new skill. And you stop learning when you're dying. You know what I mean? And if you're not learning a new skill, you know what I mean? We have to be learning new things. That's a part of, that's another aspect of brain health is the neuroplasticity. And so choosing something else, prioritizing something else, you know, although it feels weird at first, you're literally firing new neural pathways in your brain for the best, for, 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 for the besting of your brain, you know what I'm saying? For, for yeah. good. And so you want to do that. The uncomfortability is part of the growth. Like Vinny, when you raise, when you raise a dumbbell, do you want to do a really light dumbbell or you want to do a really heavy one so that you are making new pathways in your muscles? You, you want to stress the muscle. 
Right. Yes. Yeah. So you want to use the heavier, you know, you you're not there. It's called weightlifting. It's not called feather lifting, right? I can yeah. stay home and put nothing in my hands, or I could just sit in a chair and just, you know, let gravity take its its uh, its merry way with me, right? Right. Gravity will fucking rape you. It will yeah. be dry anal rape. That's what that's what gravity does to you. You have to push back against gravity every day. Every day. No matter how I feel, well, you, know, you get up and you go exercise. It's just what you do. Yeah. You don't have a choice. You people go, well, you have a choice. You really don't have a choice. You get <laughs> one life. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, I'm sorry. I hate to be that asshole, but you get one life. Well, I think the good news is that it doesn't have to be complicated, but you right. still have to choose it. And I, I would venture to say, I don't think anybody's sitting here telling you that they shouldn't exercise or they don't need to, or like, I feel like people get that moving their body is the fountain of youth and they know it. whether they choose to do it or not, they know. But the food thing, I think people are still in denial. Like, well, I'll just get the, I'll just get takeout all the time. Oh, so what? So it's a few fries. Oh, so they gave me the wrong thing. Oh, you know what? They gave me the free dessert. I'm just going to eat it. I'm not going to waste food. All that stuff is, it, it, if you're not actively choosing what you put into your mouth, you're asking for trouble. I, I couldn't agree more. Well, look at us. I used to have a friend that says in agreeance, we're in agreeance and it drove me nuts. I'm writing down my numbers right now, Anna, from, from this month. Um, you know, again, the numbers, what do you mean? My, my aerobic numbers, I'm writing them down. Right oh, good. Now. What are you up to? We're right, only two months in. Right, it's a leap a year. Time. So you have to do 366 hours. Okay. Yeah. Did you know that? Did you know it's 366 hours this year? Mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm going to have to do an extra hour, but I, I usually. Wait. I know you'll be fine, yeah. but I just like, I just wanted to feel like I was bossing you around, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. carry the one. Mm -hmm. All right. So this month, again, a tough month, right? To get mm -hmm. all of my aerobics in because let's, yeah. let's face it. There was a lot of cold, rainy days. I don't want to go outside and you, you're stuck inside on the machines and this and that. And yeah. That. Oh. All right. So after 29 days, I put in 32 hours and 10 minutes. So I cover oh. an hour a day. Nice. And for the year, I'm still pretty low on the year. I'm, you know, today is day 60 of the year. I don't know if you know that, Anna. We're on day 60. Day 60. On the 29th, the leap year. And uh, I'm at 64 hours and 15 minutes. Now, you go, oh, Vin, you usually end up with 420, 430, 440 hours for the year. Yeah, because I, I pick up heavily in the spring and in the summer when I'm training to go do mountains and all this kind of stuff and, and you know, and kayaking and now my new sport of rowing. So there's going to be a lot there. But I like to mention that from time to time. We're 60 days into the year, right? People yeah. give up on New Year's resolutions. That's when you have to get tough. Start and over, maybe, guys. Start over. It's Monday, March 4th. This comes out. Start over. Exactly. It's not maybe you've already screwed up. A lot of people, most people, statistics show, have already let their New Year's resolutions go. You can't let that happen. No. Even if you let it go, pick it up right now. Pick it up today. That's right. Whatever it is you told yourself you would do this year, do it. And just pick it up for the rest of the year. And yeah. ain't no shame getting knocked down, Anna. It's a shame if you stay down. Damn okay? right. Well, I got all kinds of stuff. Last night I said something and I, you know, of course it came from my <laughs> last book. night. I said something amazing. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you what I said. That was amazing. It, but okay. of course it came from my favorite book, um, Napoleon Hills, Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. And everyone, you know, not, not everyone, but someone goes, you need to put that on a t-shirt. And I'm thinking about putting it on a t-shirt. I got Leona okay. working on it right now. Conceive, believe, achieve. Yeah, that's classic Napoleon Hill. If you can think something and you really believe you can do it, then you can achieve it. I'm an example. Look, folks, I'm an idiot that grew up on a bayou. I've done pretty good for myself. Yeah. I spent 30 years in Hollywood, you know, training some of the, the muckety mucks in Hollywood. Yeah. Right. I had a dream, kind of like Martin Luther King. I had a dream. I saw myself as a young kid not being on that bayou. Yeah. And I told that story on the podcast. 
Yeah. I, I saw, I saw um, Cheryl Teagues. And, and it was like a third time in Sports Illustrated. All the kids are going, dude, you're not going to believe this. She's wearing a net bathing suit, and you can see her nipples. That was a big deal back mm -hmm. in, in 70, it was very, 70, 70. That was very racy back in the day. I was like, wait a minute. Sports Illustrated? Nipples? Are you kidding me? Because it meant more. Like, if you saw nipples in a Playboy, I mean, you meant to see nipples there, right? Right, right. But wait, we're looking at nipples in Sports Illustrated? What's the world coming to? <laughs> And I've told the story on the show several times, but it may be bare repeating, Anna. Yeah. So here it Say goes. It. Here it goes. Everybody else was looking at Cheryl Teague's nipples. And of course, I took a good hard glance at him. Uh, yeah. But then I looked over Cheryl Teague's shoulder and I said, Where's that? Where is she right now? I want to know where she is. I, I want right. to be on a beach. I want to see a sandy beach. I want to see this blue water, so blue it looks like like crystals out there. It, it, it's unbelievable. Where is she right now, right? And every picture I looked at in that magazine, I kept turning the page, and I started looking over the women's shoulders and going, where are they? Where are they? Where is this, this wonderful place that I've never seen while I'm living on the bayou, right? And as the story goes, I kept that, that kind of image in my head. When I got recruited to play football, I could have gone to LSU, which was my backyard. I would have still been deep in Cajun country. I could have gone to Ole Miss. When I went to my Ole Miss and my Mississippi State trips, right? You go on trips when you play football. They, they, mm -hmm. they want you. I saw the same people I saw in Downsville. I saw a bunch of Ford F-150s with, with uh, skulls splattered all over the side of it, right? Right. When I went to Tulane, I went, okay, this is different. I don't see trucks with skull, skull. I see Porsches. I see, I see Mercedes. I see other kind of cars here. Right. I want, I want to know what these people are up to. Right. Right. And Anna, you had a very similar thing. You, you went to Emory, right? That, yeah. That's, so you know what I'm talking about. And I used football as a stepping stone. Now I'm here. And then right. I became well known for what I was doing in New Orleans and then moved that whole thing to LA and then did it again there. So you go, okay, was it an accident? No, none of it is an accident. Right. If you can, if you can conceive it, I had it mm -hmm. in my head. I want to figure out where I want to be. And I believed it. Right. And the achievement day came, <clears throat> I'll never forget. I was walking with one of my uh, fancy clients. We were on Westridge. Anna, you know where Westridge is. Yep. We're just and, there the um, other day. We were coming down Westridge. And as you come down Westridge, you can see the Pacific Ocean. You can see this, this, the blue crystal ocean between this, this valley and this gap. And there was this older, looked older woman walking up, very tall, blonde, walking up. And as she got closer to us, my client, who is a celebrity, said, oh, Cheryl. Cheryl goes, oh, hey, it's blah, 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 right? They knew right. each other. Celebrities, those, those kind mm -hmm. of big celebrities know each other. I was introduced to Cheryl Teagues. Mm -hmm. And when I, she reached out, I shook her hands. Oh, my God, I'm a big fan. It's a pleasure to meet you. And I looked over her shoulder, and I was looking at blue water, right? I was looking at that Pacific Ocean right mm -hmm. behind her. And I've told this on the podcast before. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. All I had to do was conceive an idea, looking at Cheryl in a magazine when she was young, believe that I can do it. And here I was in my late 30s, early 40s, and there she was. Now, did, did it hit you at the moment that it happened? That, it that, sure was, the, that was the vision you had? It sure or did. Or did, no. did it take a second to like sink in? No, it didn't take any time. It was like it, it, I knew exactly what I was looking at. I was right. looking at the same woman. Unfortunately, I couldn't see her nipples in real life because they were covered up in an actual T-shirt, Anna. But right. um, I was doing some conceiving there too. But when I looked over her shoulders, I I knew right then, you know, right there. It's like I've been thinking about this my entire life. There right. it is. There's the beach. There's the woman. You know, you can right. manifest these things. Anything you want to be. You weigh six hundred pounds. You want to weigh one hundred and eighty. You just have to believe it. Right. And then believing it, you have to do it. 
Does right, that make you gotta sense? take the action for sure. Yeah, you can't just go, well, Vinny told me, uh, you know, it, but uh, look, I talk to people on the phone every day. They weigh 450 pounds and I'll say, um, you know, we're gonna get you down to 155 pounds. And they'll say, wait, what? You want me to lose 150? It's like, no, you're gonna eventually be 155 pounds. And then right. they'll get very quiet and I'll go, let me guess. You're at 400 pounds. How many times have you lost 100 to 150 pounds in your life? And they'll tell you three, four, five times. They'll tell you every time right, right. they've lost mm -hmm. weight down to 200 or 250, but they've never gone down to one. And say, like, okay, that's because you didn't believe in yourself, number one. Number two, you were probably on a diet that you were white knuckling it. We're taking yeah. all of that away. We need you to believe in yourself. There will be zero white knuckling here. You're going to be eating nutritious foods. You have to concede, you have to have a conception. You have to just in your mind, you have to see yourself at 155. And every one of them will say, I've never been 155 in my life. And I'll remind them, you had to pass that number on the way up. Right. But usually if I'm saying 155, I'm talking about a woman. That's usually plus five, nine. It is funny because you do forget. You're like, well, I guess I'll just never get back to that thing. I guess it'll just never work for me. It's not in the cards for me. Yeah. And you can do And you it. start to tell stories to justify it. Any, yeah. any dream deferred, you can start to tell stories about why you don't need to take action towards it. It's not for me. That's not, it's not in the cards. I don't have that body type. My set point's different. I'm big boned. I do this. Oh. Big it's bone, genetic. I got you know, it. like big bone. How, how, how was that measured? Tell me how that big bone thing was measured. Well, I remember you know, girls, would, they would put their wrists up. That's how they would do it. See, I'm big boned. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at a wrist. You know? I, know. I, don't, I, I don't know. I'm not telling you any science. I'm just telling you what happened on the schoolyard. Yeah. With, with teenage girls. Yeah. So look, folks. You can lie to yourself all you want, or you can get down to, you can get down to business. Right? Yeah. I think that's great, Vin. I like this episode because, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a huge you, yeah, proponent I, of the mindset thing. We, we just did the, uh, we, we did the uh, check-in last night, you know, the Vinny Totteridge VIP, you know, we mm -hmm. keep the accountability group. Right. And those some great conversations. The beginning of that was, I told people, it's like, I only want to hear for the first half of this success stories. Right. Okay. Because I want other people to hear that people are succeeding. They need okay, to hear. Okay. So instead story. of starting with problem solving, let's start with the positive. Yeah, we we did a bunch of success stories, and it was really good. Great. And then Love we got it. into some problem solving with a couple of people at the end. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I got a couple of people wrote to me privately and said, "Oh my God, this is the best session you've ever done." Right. That's great. So you know, you look, can open that back up yeah. anytime soon. I'm not, no, we'll see. I'm not opening it up yet. You know, when I open it up, you guys got to be ready. I'll, I'll let some more people in. I'll you let like you the know. size of the group the way it is now? I like the group. I like the size. But we'll, we'll open it up again. Yeah. At some point. I haven't thought about it. All right. But we'll, we'll, well, we'll let more people in. Yeah, it is. It is interesting because it is, it's very, it's a mental game. You know, if the mental thing weren't at all involved and it was just like, okay, just eat a burger patty, you're done. Instant transformation, yeah. you know, but it's, it, it does, it, it, it brings up all those things, all those stories that you've learned, all those beliefs that you've created around everything surrounding your health and your weight. Some of them are serving you. Some of them are not, but all of them are serving you in the sense that they're you think you're keeping yourself safe and protected when honestly a lot of them probably don't serve you. And you're like, well, wait, why would I choose that? I don't know, but you can choose. Otherwise you just have to be aware of that. It's happening. I mean, that's what you could go to therapy or do the meditation or whatever, but you, there's going to come a point where you have to like take the action towards what it is that you want. And you're going to have to calm that doubt and you're going to have to address those negative beliefs that it's not for you or that you're big boned or that whatever it is. And I know, I know we were saying big boat, but that's true. I guarantee you someone out there right now is listening going, that, that rings true because I've always thought I was big bone. That's the belief. That's the story I tell. Yeah. 
Yeah, to, yeah, in, order, in order to not have to do the uncomfortable thing of taking a look at what's so painful and why I don't want to lose weight. And what, and, and also the scary thing about it could be really scary making a change when your whole family doesn't want to make the change. You're the only one that's really scary and that's okay. We got you. That's why we're here yeah. to help encourage that. Yeah. And look, you know, I, I always say it's E I E I O, you know, everybody we know has a story and we know the story so well, it's kind of like, I ask everyone, if I say, oh, McDonald had a farm, what are the next words? The next words are E-I-E-I-O, right? Oh, McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. -I -I Everyone's got a story. We all know our friends' stories. They all tell, um, Serena and I call it the hairdresser um, phenomenon. And I, I was the one that got her started on this. Back when I was in LA, I used to go down the street to this woman who, she was a hairdresser, but she did a good job of cutting hair. And I'm, I'm, I'm in and out in like 10 minutes, right? You don't have to wash and puff and dry. Yeah. But I don't do any of that. So I would go to the same woman for years and years. And um, she made really good money, really good money. But she was always broke. The car was always broken down. Her boyfriends were always assholes and holding. And I went to this woman for like 10 years. And I said to her, I said, you know, when I first started coming to you, you had all these problems. And every time I come, you have more problems. You're, like your problems never stop. And she goes, I know, isn't that crazy? I went, no, you're the, you're the problem. Do you not get that you're the problem? And she goes, no, I don't see it that way. I went, yeah, you're, because you get to know these people after a while, you know. Say, listen, I'm telling you this to help you. You're the problem. The reason your car is always broken is because you're always giving money to some boyfriend because he's got some mail order idea and or, or this loser or that loser. Or you're always trying to fix this person, that person. Take care of you. And she hated me for that. She right. hated me for telling her that. I was like, I said, look, you can hate me all you want. Someone needs to tell you. Apparently, no one around you is brave enough. I said, is this the first time you're hearing this? Yes, it is. Well, you need to hear it right? Yeah, you need to hear it. And believe it or not, I never stopped going to the woman, she started getting her shit together. She started getting her shit together. Good for her. You know, I don't know if she's continued to get her shit together. But things started getting better. She was able yeah. to get a loan to get a nicer car. She stopped because a few times it's like, hey, I'm gonna be in there at noon, I show up and then she would call the place and go tell Vinny, I can't make it because my car won't start. It's like, well, how many times is a car not going to start before you, you start looking for a new person to chop your hair up? Right? Right. And that's what of I course. finally had a conversation with. It's like, you know, you, you, 10 years, one excuse after another. And if you're doing that to me, how many other people are you doing that to? Yeah. Right? Get your shit together. That's what I'm telling everyone today. Get your shit together. Get your shit together. You know, I remember I've. Get your shit I've, together. Good. Get your shit together. I, I've been. Uh, remembering this old, old episode of Bill Maher from years ago, probably like 15 years ago, where he had Chris Rock on and they were talking about, I know I've brought this up on the podcast before, but they were talking about some guy who was supposed to be like the second coming, like the best new talent that they had met. They both knew this guy, they came up with this guy and he had to, um, like, every, like Lauren Michaels makes everybody do sit and wait for a couple of hours when he's going to tell you that you got SNL, that you got the show, he sits and makes you wait because he mm -hmm. wants to see about your attitude. And um, because when you're working on a show like that, that's real high pressure, you can't be a, a diva. You have to be a team player and shit's not going to work out the way you want it to. And so it's like, oh, it was like the final gauntlet that Lauren Michaels throws out. You could have all the talent in the world, but if you will not sit and wait for him to take your meeting, <laughs> you're fucked. Yeah. You will not get the job and you'll blow a big opportunity. And that's what happened to this guy. And then he had a couple of other opportunities after that. And he fucked his way out of that. And, and they called it, they said this phrase that he assholed his way out of the business. Yeah. No, it wasn't for lack of talent. Amazingly talented guy, fun friend. They loved him, but you can asshole your way out of things. But see, the thing is we can asshole ourselves. You can lie to yourself. You can asshole yourself. You can do it at work. You can do it at whatever for your business. I know that's not the focus of this podcast, but it's crazy to me how much you can only grow. You can do your health, you can do your business, you can do your relationships only as much as you're 
assholishness or your limited beliefs will let you go. Yeah. And so I, yeah. I'm a huge fan of looking and seeing like, what's, how did I limit myself yesterday and write it down? I, I do, I work these processes. It's helped tremendously because then the next time you do it, you're making a choice. It's not some subconscious behavior or knee jerk reaction or a thing from childhood that's being mirrored in a drama that you're playing out now. Now you go, Oh shit, that thing, <laughs> I did it again. And I know yeah. better and it's and okay. It's part of the process, but right. you're making a choice. So make, make choose better. Get your shit together. It doesn't sound as cool well, when I say it. it sounds better when you say you know, it. You got to know how to say it, Anna, but look, you're right. You know, you got to ask yourself, you know, they always say if, if you call three different people asshole in the same day, you have to start wondering who the asshole is, right? Yeah. It, it might just be you. Or, you know, they say when you point a finger, there's three more pointing back at you. It's, you know, yeah. Things. And, you know, I always tell people, you know, just take ownership. Just, just see what the hell, yeah. you know, see what your part is. Right. You know, whenever people go, and then I told him this, and then he said that, and, you know, and they want to make, you know, they make themselves right. And you always say to yourself, I wonder what that other person would say if they were here right now. And right. They were in this conversation. Right. What would be the same conversation? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, you know, you, you got to ask yourself that, you know, you got to be real. You know, you get one life and you can lie to Real yourself. talk. Real talk, guys. Real talk. Now, look, Anna, I know this sounds like a bunch of platitudes, but, you know, I, I hear it when I talk to people. I do the consults every single day. I do the check-in group. Well, the check-in group is, is not as open as the, the consults, but people will say things it's like, well, I always let them know this is on you. This is on you. No one else is going to help you. You know, I always say, well, you know, I was doing it, but then my wife, you know, she's not doing it and they bring in crap for the kids. I always turn it on. It's like, why are you feeding your kids crap? Who, who does right. that? Do you hate your kids? You know, it's crap. You're not eating it anymore, but your kids are eating it. Yeah, yeah. but you know, they, they don't have a problem. And it's like, wait, let's change that. Yet. They don't have a problem yet. Put the word yet on the end, and then that's where you are. They don't have right. a problem yet. Yet. Right? Start drinking alcohol. At first, you don't have a problem. You keep drinking it, you don't have a problem yet. It sneaks up on you. Food does the same thing. It all does the same thing. You know, for years I said, kind of like your, your weight thing, like at some point on the way up, you were that weight. At some yeah. point you were 155. And it's funny that you say that because I always say, like when something feels like it's not possible, I say, well, wait a minute. It's not like Matt Damon was like, Matt Damon. Like right. he had to start somewhere. Everybody has to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote down a thing. This is an interesting thing. Go on. I wrote down a thing years ago, maybe around like 2010, 2011. Be the female promo voice of a network. Really? And I, and I was like, and as I was writing it, I was thinking, well, that's dumb. There are no female voices of networks since the beginning of television. Right. And then shortly after that, I booked a little promo job for CBS for some swift justice with Judge Jackie Glass, one of those cheesy judge shows. Yeah. It was CBS, daytime national show. Yeah. And I was like, that's weird. And I, I went in to Elaine Craig and her husband. Elaine Craig is like a voiceover casting legend in LA. And she said, <laughs> this is the phrase that always gets me. We heard everyone. We looked all over town. And it was just the same thing over and over again. And I always think to myself, it's so funny when they say, we, we've seen everyone. I'm like, no, you haven't, because <laughs> I'm yeah. just walking in the door right now. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I read it and I, and I got the job and I was in shock because I didn't think about my list or anything. It didn't occur you, to me, you but I was, like I was in shock. You, you didn't have the Cheryl Teagues moment. No, no, but hold on. Go on. So I do the job and it was fine. And you know, that show ran for what it ran for. And I got to, I got a little job out of it. Didn't, it didn't go very long. And then in 2016, I read for this spot 
for ABC for um, their Thursday night TGIT lineup, the Grey's Anatomy scandal and how to get away with murder. Yeah. And I read that thing and I was like, oh, that's cute. I'd be what really good at that. Like? What did it sound like? Let, 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 uh, take one. Let's hear it. Oh. <laughs> get your popcorn popping and your Twitter thumbs ready for Grey's Anatomy scandal and how to get away with murder tonight on ABC. Okay. So I wound up booking that one. I'm always and, thrilled that I have that woman doing this fucking podcast. <laughs> that never gets old for me. Well, listen, this is this is the thing. And I didn't think about it still. I didn't think about my list or whatever. Right. And then Andrea Altman and Melissa Young were both over at Oxygen. And they couldn't get a female voice on Oxygen, which is literally a network for shows for women. Yeah. But they couldn't get a female voice to be the promo voice. Oh, because of network brass, not because they were trying. So then they moved, they moved over to ABC and they were trying at ABC for five years to get a female voice on the network. So I wound up booking that night of shows, that block of shows. Yeah. And doing that for a few years. And it was so funny because they said, do you know what a big deal this is? And I was like, I don't know. I just read the spot and I got the job. Like, that's what I do. And then most of the times I don't get the job, by the way. <laughs> like, it's like, right. I'm glad to have the job, but. Yeah, this is just what I do. And they were, and they were like, we've been trying to get a female voice on the network for five years. Wow. And then we finally have, we have, in the history of ABC, we never had a female voice promoting the shows. And yet there are no more focused shows focused d towards women than Shonda Rhimes shows. Right. So why it may, it makes sense to do that. So that was fun. And then in 2019, uh, another thing, and it, it was interesting because after a little while, they kind of brought the dude voices back. I think people are really used to hearing male voices. And then it happened again with NBC. And instead of it just being one night of shows, I was doing all of late night comedy and variety yeah. for a two year period there. And then it hit me. I wrote down in 2010, be the female voice of a network, female promo voice of a network. And I was like, holy shit. I did, not only did I do it, but I did it in such a way where I was the first one. And it hit, and it hit me, you know what I mean? Like that was just so crazy. Yeah. And I mean, I don't, I rarely do promos anymore. It was a great one, run while it lasted. Um, what are you gonna do? But uh, you know, it, it was one of those things. And so I think to myself, if I could, if I could write something like that down, I could certainly build Eat Happy Kitchen into a national brand well, and have pe have sugar-free food for people. We can right. certainly grow this podcast. Like I literally, like we put, they put, the, it's in the history of television. And now I hear female voices on the air all the time on all the networks. Yeah. Cause they're like, oh, you can do that. You can put a broad on the air. Yeah. Like, you're, you're the Rosa Parks of uh, network <laughs> television. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's really funny too. The one year there's a thing called Promax, which is like the, the promo awards. And it's really geared toward more the creative producers and stuff like that. But they do have like best voiceover. And every year, Morgan Freeman wins. Like whatever promo he has voiced, As Morgan he Freeman should. wins. He'll be dead. As he should. And they'll still keep giving him awards. As he should. Well, it was either 2014 or 2015 or 2016. One of those years, I was doing ABC. And my agent said, we're going to put you up for this award. But it's against Morgan Freeman he's going to win it. So I was like, okay, cool. And then my agent, she called me, she goes, holy shit, you won best voiceover. You and did, I think it's because it was such a novelty to have a woman on a promo. Cause they're just used to hearing really? at the point, at that point, men's voices. I was like, I won. Cause it's a novelty. I mean, it is a good promo. They did a good job, but uh, it was just, it was just really funny. I was like, I can say finally for one, for one little tiny piece of thing in my life, I beat Morgan Freeman at an award show. And I'm sure he's definitely licking his wounds. Yeah, it, it had to hurt for him. Yeah, it had to hurt for him to be shown yeah. up by a woman. Look, when I was up for Audible Book of the Year, read by the author, it was I was up with Dolly Parton. And I went, obviously. That is so amazing, too. Because right. when, <laughs> what did you say to me when we first started this podcast? You were self-conscious. Yeah, I, I, I reread my book twice because I didn't like the way I did it the first time. I went back in and did it again. Yeah. And um, Dean Laurie couldn't believe I did that. He goes, you went back and you, you had trouble doing it the first time and you didn't like it. 
I felt too monotone. So I went back in and that's when I just got crazy with it and started doing extra stuff and all that stuff. And it was up for Audible Book of the Year by audible.com. And I looked at my category and it was me, three other people I didn't recognize and Dolly Parton. <laughs> Dolly Parton. So I went, okay, well, there's obviously Dolly's going to win. Well, it turns out I didn't win and Dolly didn't win. Somebody else okay, won. Okay, ma'am. Right. But hey, you know, in what world do you end up in a top five category with Dolly Parton? You know, it's that same kind of weird thing. My story is not anywhere near as good as yours because I didn't beat Morgan Freeman. Um, it, 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 it turns out it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. It's just one of those things like that's a fun thing that happened. Yeah. But for me, what it did was validate that your dreams matter, your goals for yourself matter, what you write down and intend for yourself matter and your actions to follow through definitely matter. And if I say the word matter, the word matter means like stuff, physical matter, right? Yeah. A paper. A so when something matters, it's literally coming to fruition. It's manifesting. Does that All make right. sense? Yeah, no, no, I'm with so you. That's why I say when you write that stuff down and then take the action, you will literally be putting it into existence. It matters. Existential conversations with Anna yeah. Gino. I love this shit. I could talk about it all day yeah, long. Me too. You, you and I. That, that, I think that's how you we, know what I mean. Like we both. We're very practical on the podcast, but we have very, yeah, deep rooted um beliefs because to me i need to make sense of it somehow i need to figure it out because i don't just want to be rattling around here i want to set some intentions i want to have a purpose while i'm on this earth so anna with all this conversation so the question becomes should i do a t-shirt that says conceive believe achieve yeah okay hey uh leona lois you don't is is it a copy is it a trademarked phrase though from no, the I, I looked napoleon it up, hill people uh, no, it's been used for gazillions of years. And yeah, I think it's like one of those things that's in the public yeah, it's domain public or whatever. Domain. There's, there's a yeah. guy who I'm not going to say, I'm not going to put my name under as a quote, right? I'm just going to put NSNG or VinnyTartarich.com. I'm not going to put, you know, conceive, believe, achieve Vinny Tartarich. I'm not going to claim it. And I think that I, I saw there was a book. Do you put like it. NSNG on the back or something? Like to uh, brand know, it? We'll figure it out. We'll, 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 we'll see what we can do. Who knows? At any rate, uh, Anna, I feel like we've done this show. We've done. Yeah, it. we have. We're good. This has been the rah rah. Well, I, I, I wanted to talk about more belief stuff, and people, people do. They, they write all the time about it. That it, the struggle is real, and I know that uh, Leona and I have offline, and she's, she's excited about having more of that kind of talk as well because it is, it's a physical game, and then you have no choice but to unearth the mental game of it all. Yeah. Um, and she's an artist, so she's got wild and wacky thoughts anyway. I love it. Yeah. It's amazing when Leon, uh, Leon and I try to talk about what I want on the hat. Yeah. What I say and what she hears and what she regurgitates. <laughs> the yeah. fact that it's like, wow, I'm, I'm not an artist at all. I live with an artist and I have an artist working for me and I can't communicate with them whatsoever. I try though. <laughs> Um, You're fine. So You're doing great. Anna has done miraculous things. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be using her spices in a couple of different ways. And about, Ooh. yeah, I'm going to use that dill. I'm going to put it in my creme fraiche, mix it up. I love to hear it. Put a little extra salt in there because that's who I am. And uh, I also put a little lemon juice, Anna, just a little. Oh, yeah. I love the lemon juice in there. It gives it the zestiness. Yeah. And then uh, I'm, I'm making some salmon. So I'm going to have that with salmon. And, um, but, but I saw, Anna, I saw your crab cakes the other night. The other, yeah. On, on that. Um, uh, tell people, let's do this, Anna. While we're What's doing that? For you right now. T get, tell us how to make these crab cakes really quickly. How does that oh. work? What goes into well, them? You get, you eat happy too. <laughs> it's, the recipes and eat happy too. I you don't. can't tell me because I want to go in the kitchen and make it. I got some lump crab. Yeah, um, I can text you. I have, uh, yeah, lump crab good. meat, yeah. spices, mm -hmm. egg. What do you hold it you, together with? Egg, almond flour, and egg. Okay, you I just have, have to make sure that here the the, the key is with uh, jumbo lump crab meat is that you just want to make sure you dry it off well so that the egg and the almond flour can do its job to it's bind it together. Good. You don't have to use a lot of almond flour, by the way. 
just, just a little bit. To hold just, it together. Yeah, just hold I would it. use, do you have any scallions or, or onion well, you can dice or shallot? I Serena just left a few days ago. So we still have a, you know. Yeah, I would dice that up. I, I have to get the recipe over to you because I haven't looked at it in a couple, a while. Yeah, send that over so I can have some. I'm going to have certain. Yeah, you need some crab cakes. Yeah. I would put the barbecue dust in there and give it a little smoky taste. Oh, I'm going to put all um, I also have a homemade remoulade because I love my remoulade um, recipe in there, which is basically like if mayo hit tartar sauce hit Worcestershire, that's a remoulade. Yeah, I don't have Worcestershire around here and I don't have tartar sauce, so. Um, you have mayo though. No, I don't. We don't keep but, mayo. Uh, I can make mayo. Um, you can. But I'm not. That takes too I much time. People, yeah, people don't usually want to do that. I have the best homemade mayo recipe, but it's a big ask to get people well, to want to do that. If you want to get all of these incredible recipes, Eat Happy, the cookbook, Eat Happy 2, and coming soon, Eat Happy Italian. That's yeah, right. All of those. Go to AnnaBocino.com or go to Eat Happy dot com and go check out everything she has there you want to get the dust do you have any of the pucked up dust uh left Anna? uh yeah i think we have like 70 or so um pucked up barbecue which is basically it clumped a little more than usual we don't use any anti-caking anti-caking agents anti-slip agents fillers cornstarch we don't use an anti-slip agent i said that already um so it caked up a little bit so we marked it down 33 percent. it's the best deal on the website uh the pre-order period for Eat Happy Italian expires the Ides of March, so please get in there. I am I am creating a brand new PDF just for the people who order pre-order three or more books, which is Eat Happy for the Holidays, and I'm writing a bunch of new recipes to go in there. If you do not pre-order three or more books during this bonus period, you won't get it, and you'll want it down the road. I'm telling you, you're going to want it, and you're not going to you're going to have to pay for it down the road. Do it this way. And get and support the book launch and then you get the pdf and then a few people quite a few people have reserved 10 or more books Vinny, 10. Wow. 10. Wow. you know why because they're going to give them as presents because the book comes out october 8th and they're oh. going to get the spice three pack and they're going to get the eat happy kitchen apron yeah they're going to get gonna, it all they're gonna get the apron they're like going to get it all McCall. you know what to do with me <clears throat> we all go shopping on amazon before you go to amazon Go to VinnyTotteries.com, click through the banner. It puts coal on the fire, gets my train down the track. That's where you can find Anna's books. You can get the book we were talking about earlier, Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind by Dr. Georgia Eads. Go check all of that out. Rate and review this podcast. You might. Oh, that's do very important. Yeah. Unless you're a vegan and you hate me, don't rate or review. Um, look, we promised Wang Chung and we're going <laughs> to Did we? Thing. Yeah, we did. But hang out, oh, okay. because I'm going to do two songs tonight because Anna reminded oh. me of a different song. So we're oh. going to song, and then we're going to move into something else. So folks, you really have to stay until the end. On behalf of Miss, and Anna, don't go away because I, you got to wait until I turn the thing off to upload. So okay. hang out. On behalf oh, of Anna Bocino, my name is Vinny Tartarich. That's how he traps me. Living and do it with a little Wang Chung. 